Welcome into this crossover Thursday, Locked On Bears, Locked On Lions here on the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm Lauren Cox from Locked On Bears, along with Matt Deary from Locked On Lions, putting together our preview for Sunday's big divisional matchup. This crossover Thursday podcast is presented by our friends at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is so much fun and it's easy to play. There's no competing with other players. It's just you versus the projections available. Pick two to five players, and if they'll score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. It can literally take less than 60 seconds to enter. It's that easy. We love Prize Picks and we know you will too. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with our promo code locked on. That's pricepicks.com, promo code locked on. Matt, your Detroit Lions coming off of a big win over the Green Bay Packers. I think Chicago Bears <laughs> fans very appreciative of that. Big second win of the season for you guys. What, what do you sort of see as the biggest storylines coming out of that game and coming into Chicago? Lauren, great to see you and uh, do the show with you as always. And um, yeah, I, you know, people are excited here. I mean, a five game losing streak, you know, the sky is falling. Hawkinson's traded Aubrey Pleasant, the defensive backs coach is fired. And then the, here come the Packers and it's like, yeah, right. They're not going to be Darren Rogers. He's due to win. And the lions played very well. Uh, it wasn't a great performance. The offense certainly sputtered too many times and only scored 15 points against the Packer defense. It's not that good. And then didn't have Devondre Campbell and lost some guys to injury during the game. Yet they found a way to win and in the end found a way to hang on and get one last stop, which they just have not done in two years under Dan Campbell. So storyline is, can they build off of it? Can they actually get two wins in a row? Can they win a road game, Lauren, for the first time under Dan Campbell? Going back all the way through last year where they didn't win a road game. And this year they're an over on the road. So that's the storyline here is, can they get some momentum? and? and do it again. And obviously I know in Chicago, everybody's just uh, glowing about Justin Fields and calling him the greatest playmaker of all time. So we'll see how the lions can, uh, can adjust and, and play him this week. Yeah. In some ways the bears have, have become almost a little bit more like the lions in terms of the offense coming on board and, and putting up points at, at a, a pretty high pace, but now their defense all of a sudden has really sort of fallen off. And I think that's sort of been the, the narrative for the, for the lions, at least, in the early portions of the season, I know the offense has kind of trailed off a little bit from where it started there. But again, at the Green Bay Packers, though, too, they, the defense all of a sudden can hold Aaron Rodgers to nine points. Not too many defenses have been able to say that over the course of the season as well. So I, I have a feeling we're going to be in for a bit of a shootout between these two teams, at least in terms of, of points on the scoreboard, because both of these defenses have, generally speaking, have had trouble kind of stopping most of what opponents want to do against them. But, 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 how but, hold but Rodgers- let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. The storyline, though, has got to be Fields, right? Are you feeling the same thing? I had Brad Spielb- uh, Spielberger from PFF, who's a Bears guy, on yesterday, and he said the same, you know, he's like pumped the brakes a little bit. I'm not one to say that I'm ready to anoint Justin Fields. My goodness, the talk in that town over the last few days, almost like you guys won last week. Yeah, you know, we've been, it, it really has felt like a, a victory week, even after losing to the Miami Dolphins and the Dallas Cowboys before that. And you know, I think there's there's a there's a divide here where I think every Bears fan and everyone who covers the Bears is obviously very encouraged by what we've seen from Justin Fields, especially like the last three weeks in a row. They're starting to sustain this. But I think, the, uh, you know, the 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 more seasoned among us ha- have seen three game stretches of quarterback playing really well before. And that's not to say we don't believe Justin Fields can be very good and that he's taking a step. But, you know, like there were moments where you felt like this about Mitch Trubisky and there were moments that you felt like this about. Jay Cutler. That doesn't mean we instantly assume that Fields is no longer it, that it's going to all crash down to earth and not be good from here. But just that you know we want to keep seeing it before it's truly like yes, all in because we we were we're just five games removed from still very big question marks about you know how quickly is he going to be able to figure this stuff out? You know, is he is he going to be able to see the field fast enough and make you know be decisive enough with the ball? He's been doing that, and and if he continues to do that, I mean, absolutely, that's where all the excitement is right now. And not only as a rusher but as a thrower, I think. The running game is is really the the highlights, but it's overlooking some of the progress he has made as a pocket as a pocket passer. You know, being able to to have better pocket presence and step around the rush, know when he needs to scramble and when he can just step up and around without fully leaving the pocket, and of course, continuing to be pretty darn accurate downfield. He just can't do the the quick timing rhythm stuff underneath the really snap step throw kind of really quick release stuff. It's still an area he can he can keep working on, but absolutely he's been everything in the last few games that the Chicago Bears have been hoping he could be. Seems like Getzies they they get it now, no pun intended that they actually have a game plan for him because 
uh, what was it the Thursday night game earlier in the year uh, at Soldier Field against uh, Washington? That was just that was grotesque football, <laughs> and the poor guy was under siege and just couldn't even complete a forward pass. But now it seems like all right, there the threat of the run is there, and it's going to be similar for the Lions uh, from Week One when they faced Jalen Hurts, and they did not do well in that department. So Fields is running some of that RPO and doing some Hurtsy and things. Could be a long day for the Lions defense, you know. Yeah, but but how, how did how did the Lions clamp down on Aaron Rodgers so well? I mean, I know the, the Packers offense itself is is a mess right now, and that's a big yeah. part. Of it. I mean, nine points against any Aaron Rodgers team seems like a, a pretty good day at the office. They did well. I mean, like I said, I, Kirby Joseph has really solidified one of the safety spots. The rookie from Illinois has been fantastic. Uh, they they I mean, pretty much they allowed the Packers to run up and down the field on them, but when they got inside the red zone. Uh, three interceptions, which is unheard of. Rogers, a couple of bad throws, a couple of them. The Lions uh, took advantage. One hit a helmet. Uh, one was the, the the thick six attempt to throw back to Bakhtiari, <laughs> and uh, Hutchinson read it, and it was not a good throw. If Rogers throws it more toward the back of the end zone, it's a touchdown. But um, I think they got there was a little bit of luck there. But they did tackle well. They kept guys in front of them for the most part. And, uh, you know, the next thing you know, based on two, the, the, the Lions moved the football a little bit. Rodgers wasn't on the field as much, and it worked out. But, no, it wasn't like they – I think the I think Packers still had over 400 yards of total offense. So, And that's interesting because, you know, red zone offense had been one of the huge Achilles heels for the Bears all season. That They'd always had a decent, you know, rushing yards and, and getting into the red zone. But you mentioned that game against the Commanders. They had drive after drive after drive finish at the one-yard line. They kept having – and they had like a – a hand like a 10 or so plays in the red zone that he just could not finish in the end zone. But the last three weeks have been like, that's been one of the big revelations for the offense is just like more creative and more consistent play calling in the red zone and being able to finish those drives. So I'm curious to see how these two teams match up in that area of the field. And we'll get into some of the more specific matchups uh, across positions, one-on-ones that are going to go far in deciding who ends up winning this game as we continue our crossover Thursday podcast right here on the locked on podcast network. This crossover Thursday episode is brought to you by our friends at Blue Nile. Whether you're looking to pop the question or have a milestone you want to celebrate or just want to let your love sparkle, Blue Nile can help you make your celebrations even more memorable. They've helped millions of couples create their perfect engagement ring or find that piece of jewelry to commemorate that special milestone because Blue Nile is the original online jeweler with the largest selection of independently graded diamonds and pieces priced significantly below traditional retailers. If you're having trouble choosing what's right for you, Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24-7 to help you find a memorable gift for every budget. With a 100% satisfaction guaranteed, every order shipped for free, insured, and in discreet packaging so you can keep it a surprise when it arrives. Make your moment sparkle with our friends at Blue Nile. Go to BlueNile.com and use our promo code Locked On to save $50 on your purchase of $500 or more. That's B L U E. NILE.com code locked on to save $50 on your purchase of 500 or more. BlueNile.com code locked on. Back up our crossover Thursday, Lauren Cox, Locked On Bears with Matt Deary from Locked On Lions. And now I want to get into some of the key matchups in this game, Matt. And I'll start. You mentioned Kirby Joseph, the, the rookie safety yes. for the Detroit Lions, a couple of interceptions last week against. The, the Green Bay Packers, and I have a feeling the Bears are going to want to take some shots downfield here, trying to get Chase Claypool a bit more involved in that offense. And, of course, uh, Darnell Mooney, they want to go vertical with those guys when they get the opportunity. And I think that's where I start pointing to is, is can the Lions, are they going to sit back with you know a deep shell? Is Kirby Joseph going to be roaming around downfield? Will Justin Fields t- test him a little bit on trying to take some of these shots to the outside? And, and how do those one-on-one matchups underneath go with guys like Jeff Akuda and Amani Oriari? Or- 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 Oh, I can never say Aru, Aru, we are up. Aru, are you? Jesus. Yes. Man. I'm stubborn. It's difficult. Up. Yeah. <laughs> and how, I feel like a dog. It's like Aru, Aru, Aru. But, and how those wide receivers against these Lions cornerbacks are going to match up. Cause we've seen, like you said, like even the Packers were able to get pretty good yardage against them, even with their wide receiving core a little bit more decimated. But then it's about finishing those drives with seven points instead of three. No, I think that's a good one, and and certainly Joseph has been a stud NFC uh, Defensive Player of the Week, uh, first time the Lions have ever had a rookie do that, so that's pretty good. The the fellow rookie, Aiden Hutchinson, is going to have to get some some touches on fields and get some pressure on him. I think that's going to be key as well. I'll go go a step further. Watch Jeffrey Okuda this Sunday against Justin Fields as kind of a spy. Now, 
Normally you'd say, well, wait, a cornerback would be a spy, but last few weeks, Aaron Glenn has sort of employed Okuda in a bit of a hybrid role where at times really their best cover corner has become such a good tackler that Glenn, the defensive coordinator, future head coach, Aaron Glenn, uh, as we like to call him, has put him in the box as a hybrid sort of player. And he's done a great job tackling, whether it was the Miami game, uh, even the, against New England, uh, he, he racked up a lot of tackles and saved plays from being 17 yard plays, whether it was a quarterback scrambling or a tight end or a running back out of the backfield into a five or six yard play. So Okuda sort of as a spy, I don't know if it'll be Malcolm Rodriguez, Derek Barnes, who played really well last week as a linebacker, who it's going to be, but just watch Okuda. If he's making tackles on fields and keeping him in front of him, so it's not the, the, like the play that he had against the Dolphins when he ran for, what, 60 yards. Um, if Okuda is a guy that is, is important in in helping with containing fields, keep an eye on that one. I think that's something to watch. That's a great nugget. I don't know if we would have found otherwise. Uh, that's and, and it'll be interesting because the Dolphins last week, their whole plan was, I mean, it wasn't as much man coverage as we might have thought they would, but they had a lot of plays with a quarterback spy in on Justin Fields. And there were plenty of plays where, you know, they run the read option and the end man waits for Justin Fields. And on a lot of those fields, just still outran him. Like there's, I mean, the safe, strong safety is just keeping eyes on fields and he beats him to the edge. He'll make the guy miss the tackle two or three times. And it, there was not an answer. I think defenses are still looking for the best way to kind of slow him down and keep him in the pocket. We've seen blitzing attempts that ha have done it somewhat, but he's just getting so adept at, at reading what the what the defense is trying to do to him and know when he can beat the guy with his legs and when he can't. But maybe Akuda. I mean, he's more of a you know four four type speed than maybe the linebackers or safeties that have been spying Justin Fields in in other games that I think that's that's a good point of, of where they might be able to slow him down if we look in the other direction I've, I've really got a close eye on where the Bears can get some pass rush on Jared Goff because the Bears are, are one of the worst pass rushes in the NFL especially after trading Robert Quinn and it's a, it's a Lions offensive line that is that has played so well and I think right away you look at the group and then as far as like name recognition goes, right? The right guard situation seems to be where you might be able to find a, a little bit of wiggle room, but I mean, the Bears don't have much in terms of interior pass rush. Justin Jones is, is the guy, but he hasn't really been consistently flashing and they've been doing quite a rotation at the edge spot with some younger guys. And the, the efficiency, the production has just not been there in some part because of, of Quinn and the production he was doing. But Quinn was also the one of the top five in the league in highest rates of double teams. And so all the other pass rushers were getting more one on ones and they're not getting nearly as easy of the pass rushing opportunities anymore and, and not winning them nearly as much as a result. And I, I don't think the Bears can afford to just let Jared Goff sit there in a clean pocket and pick their secondary part all game because that's what worked so well for Tua Tunga Vailoa last week. Yeah, and obviously, too, is playing unbelievable football. He's the number one yeah. passer in the league, and, and Jared Goff is not. Goff had a really lousy game, if you go by PFF numbers, uh, this past weekend. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you take Khalil Mack and Robert Quinn off that defense um, and, and give the Lions some credit, too. That they've, they've protected Goff pretty well this season. Like you said, the O-line is definitely a strength. Uh, the tackles, Panay Sewell and Taylor Decker have been really good. Um I'm with you. I, I want to see not only the pass blocking and certainly the Bears have got to get some pressure on Goff. Uh, and if they pressure him in the first series of the second half, that's usually when you get him because Goff seems to throw an interception in the first half of the sec first series of the second half, no matter what the situation is. It's uh. been the Lions kryptonite. But I want to watch the Lions as just road grade that Bears D line. And now that Roquan's gone and run the football. Uh, DeAndre Swift, they say is healthier. Uh, Jamal Williams uh, on, on that muddy field, maybe, and it's a little cold. I could see him getting about 100 yards, and that keeps fields off the field. So I think the Lions establishing that run. They feel like with their tight ends and Mitchell and Wright, now that Hawkinson's gone, that those guys are better blockers. So I would watch the O-line and, and those tight ends really just try to just try to manhandle the Bears and, and, and really run the football a lot at them. Yeah, the Bears have not been a very consistent run defense this season. It's been a little bit better the last couple of games in terms of the yardage they give up, but but part of it too has been that other teams have been passing on them so well they haven't needed to run the ball on them nearly as much. Well, we'll kind of get a sense of where this game might go. We'll give our predictions and, and wrap up our preview here as we continue the Crossover Thursday podcast right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Locked On Bears, Locked On Lions. Our crossover podcast today is also brought to you by our friends at Ed Online, the number one source for all of your sports betting needs. And as we look at this Bears-Lions game, Bears at home are favored by three 
right now at Battle Line. So eventually, essentially, it, that's that's a toss up when the home team is favored by three. That's usually the points you get for having the home field advantage there. So a uh, slight inclination that way. The the money line has Bears minus one fifty, Lions plus one thirty straight up, and the over under set at forty eight and a half, which I think is as high as I've seen it for a Bears game this season. I think. The, our odds makers at BetOnline expecting some some higher scoring after what they've seen the Bears do the last couple of weeks and knowing that the Lions don't have a great defense and the Bears defense is not playing particularly well right now either. But BetOnline is more than just your Bears and Lions games. It's across all sports. It's the number one resource we recommend for all of your sports betting, whether whether it's every professional or amateur league out there, football, basketball, soccer, and more. It's at BetOnline.net. So head on over to their website today. Or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action happening each and every day. Bet online is where the game starts. All right, Matt, we we wrap up here with our crossover Thursday locked on lines, locked on Bears predictions for this game. And coming off of a, a win over the Packers, I'm sure confidence is going to be as high as it's been in a while for Detroit. I think. For Chicago, even coming after a loss, two straight losses and a loss to the Dolphins, Bears fans are still coming to this thinking, oh, well, it is still the Lions. And even though they beat the Green yeah. Bay Packers, they're still a two-win team. They still have, I think, the la- the lowest-ranked defense in the NFL in terms of points allowed per game. And right. so I, Bears yeah. fans are going to come in saying, like, yeah, maybe we'll give up some points to them, but that they can, they can, the Bears could still put up and, and start shooting out with some of these teams the way they were keeping up with the Dolphins. They're averaging over 30 points a game over the last three games. And so I... I got, I'm going to lean with Bears on this one. I don't think it's going to be easy. I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I don't think it's going to be that one-sided. I think the Lions will keep things close for, for a lot of the game here, and I think they will keep the ball out of Justin Fields' hands as much as possible and have some success running the ball and limit how much the Bears can run away with the scoring as much as they might want to. So I'm going to say 27, 20, eh, let's, I'll go 24, 20 Bears over the Lions. I'm going to take Detroit here, and I, that's a rarity for me, I don't especially, blame you. On, especially on the road, Lauren. But uh, I think the Lions are due to win uh, a road game. Like I said before, it's time. Uh, it's long overdue. They're not a good football team, not yet. I mean, they're still, you know, still bad. They're still two and six. They're still five, nineteen and one, or whatever it is under Dan Campbell. It, it has to get better. Um, but I like some of the momentum on the defensive side. I think they'll, you know, they're going to learn a little bit on what didn't work against Jalen Hurts in Week One, and I do think that Fields and the Bears will score because the Lions defense is still going to give up some points, and it's going to be high scoring. I think this is, you know, Lions come down and score, Bears come down and score type of situation, uh, with both run defenses not being very good. You talked about the Bears interior line, the Lions interior defensive line is not very good either. So I'm going to say. I don't know, 34-30, 34-31 Lions. Um, I, I think kicking game will play a factor. Maybe Jack Fox, the punter, pinning the Bears deep, making fields go a, a, a long field a couple of times. Um, Michael Badgley back against his former team. I know he kicked for, what, one game <laughs> for the Bears earlier this year. So maybe he's the hero, but I think the Lions are due to win on the road, and I think they're gonna, I think they're going to do it this week. What I like about this matchup is that, you know, we've seen plenty of Bears Lions games over the years where neither team is very good and it tends to be low scoring and kind of uglier football because neither offense can really kind of get things going consistently. And it's not that the defense are playing so well. So I'm looking forward to this one that even though the two teams are not playoff caliber opponents just yet at least it should be more exciting it should be more yeah. high scoring it should be more fun things should just be like more opening up and like yeah it's, it's bad defense if you will but it's more fudge when you're seeing both of these offenses executing at potentially a, a higher level against a couple of defenses that ha- have struggled and may struggle with the different things that each opponents can throw at them no i agree and i think the talent on both sides is starting to get there i think yeah. the bears haven't seen a guy if, if he's healthy i think deandre swift along with amon ross st brown those two guys can be really electric and obviously for the bears uh, you know fans have been waiting in chicago for for a quarterback for decades and you throw herbert in the mix a little bit and i think mooney's real good he had a good game last year against the lions there's some talent on the field so at least on offense i think and brisker i like defensively you mentioned him before so that should make it exciting and hey lauren the winner of this game gets second place in the nfc north if the (laughs) packers lose to dallas which is possible so uh, something to play for here. <laughs> Did you ever think we would we, you would be saying that right now when you know week nine game on the schedule that the Bears and Lions could be playing for second place at three wins or four wins potentially? 
whoever wins this game has to haze Peter Bukowski in some way. That, that's uh, that's our that's our deal, Lauren. We got to do that. Well, I, I'm glad I'm glad you got some opportunity to do so after the last game, and certainly when we when we have our next Bears Packers matchup, we will we will stick in as many of those. Oh games yeah, as we absolutely can here, Matt. It, <laughs> it's been a pleasure doing this crossover Thursday podcast with you. I appreciate. Everyone who's been tuning in and making Locked On Bears or Locked On Lions your first listen each and every day. Now that we're wrapping up, if you're looking for your second listen today, you can check out Locked On Sports today with the aforementioned Peter Bukowski keeping you up to speed on all of the biggest storylines out of sports, recapping all the biggest games across the sports landscape. And, you know, he's had to talk about his own Green Bay Packers struggles, and it's been <laughs> very cathartic for a lot of Bears and Lions fans to That's tune right. in and That's see. Right. You know, you know, soak up their tears a little bit and enjoy the uh, the struggles that they've had over there this season because you know you, you never you always kind of feel like Green Bay is going to figure it out and turn it around at some point and at this point I I don't know if that's going to happen I spent most of the season thinking they would but I'm trying to savor it while it lasts because you never know if somehow Jordan Love will end up being a great great quarterback. Oh, there. Check them out at at Locked On Sports Today podcast. Then come on back tomorrow for another episode of locked on lions he and i will both be recapping our own podcast after the game win lose or draw we're here for you five days a week on the locked on podcast network your team every day so for matt dury of locked on lions i'm lauren cox from locked on bears and we will talk to you again tomorrow